Okay, I think uh, we are ready to start. Um, so welcome, my name is Martine Friesen. I'm a program consultant here at the Manitoba Arts Council and I will be your host for today's webinar. I'm also joined today by our communications team, Elise Sorette and Vi Hewson, who will be troubleshooting and managing the chat and the Q&A. We're also joined by Jordan, who you can see on the screen from ECHO, and she will be providing uh, ASL interpretation. Before we begin the webinar, the Manitoba Arts Council wants to acknowledge that it carries out its work on the original lands of the Anishinaabeg, the Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Our office is located on Treaty 1 territory, but our work extends throughout Treaties 2, 3, 4, and 5. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories and remain committed to working in partnership with Indigenous communities in the spirit of truth, reconciliation, and collaboration. We recognize that Indigenous people's knowledge of and relationship with the land, air, and water is key to a sustainable future for all. At the Manitoba Arts Council, we respect the distinct worldview and creative culture of Indigenous communities by prioritizing Indigenous artistic and cultural expression through our granting programs and initiatives. So thanks everyone for joining us. Um, Please uh, use the chat and the Q&A buttons on your Zoom screen to type in any questions you have. Uh, and please feel free to send us any questions throughout the presentation, uh, but we will uh, wait to answer those questions until uh, the very end um, of the presentation. Um, this webinar will be recorded and will be available for viewing on our website. So let's get started. Um, Today's session, what we're going to cover is basically all things related to the new support operate grant. We're going to talk about uh, what is operating funding. We're going to review who is eligible to apply. We're going to go over the parameters of the program and how to start an application. We're going to briefly cover the four different sections of the actual application. And we're going to talk a little bit about peer assessment. So in case you are new here to the Manitoba Arts Council, uh, we are an arm's length agency of the province of Manitoba. We distribute grants to artists, arts groups, and organization for the organizations uh, for the study, enjoyment, creation, and performance of arts and culture. We operate in both French and English. There's going to be a French uh, info session uh, later on this afternoon following this one. And the majority of our funding decisions are made by a peer assessment process. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what that is uh, later on. So um, on the screen right now, you can see the list of the 14 different grants that we offer at MAC. And they're sorted into six different streams uh, based on the type of activity they support. Uh, but today we are going to focus solely on the operate grant, which is in the support uh, stream. So we're talking about operation, operational funding. What is operating funding? Well, uh, the Support Operate program invests in the ongoing activities of arts and cultural organizations. Funding through this program supports the operating costs and the, the delivery of impactful arts and cultural programming and services. Uh, so the difference between operating grants and project grants is that with operating funding, the organization itself is assessed over a longer period. Project funding, on the other hand, is more focused on a specific project over a shorter period of time. So the activity is assessed in a project grant rather than the organization. So let's talk about who is eligible to apply to the new support operate grant. Only organizations are eligible to apply and they can be professional not-for-profit organizations, professional arts service organizations, not-for-profit community arts organizations, and book and periodical publishers. So if you are an organization, you have to meet all of the following criteria. You have to have arts and culture as the primary focus of your mandate. You have to have reported annual revenues of at least $50,000 for one of the last three years. 
You must have paid staff in a leadership role or are planning to have within the next two years. You must have the ability to report your financial and statistical information in the Canada Arts Database or CADAC. I'm going to talk a little bit about what that is uh, later on. Your organization must pay professional fees to Manitoba artists and arts cultural professionals, and you have to have the ability to plan programming or activities over a two-year period, so two years in advance. In addition to that criteria that I, I covered, if you are a book and periodical publisher, you have to publish primarily literary gen genres, and by that we mean uh, novels, uh, poetry, short story, creative nonfiction, graphic novels, or art criticism. And you must primarily publish titles written by people other than shareholders or staff. In, the addition, in addition to the criteria that I just covered, first-time applicants to the Support Operate Grant must have received a minimum of two MAC project grants since 2018. Now, that does not include any funding you might have received through the Arts and Culture Sustainability Fund or um, through the recognized prizes and nomination process. The following organizations are ineligible to apply for Manitoba Arts Council support operate grants. They are museums and heritage groups, libraries, Organizations affiliated with large institutions that are not financially, curatorially, and artistically independent. Municipalities and subcommittees of municipalities. Charitable foundations. Now, um, just a note about that. Uh, some people are confused about the difference between a charitable foundation and being a registered charity. We certainly fund registered charities and they are eligible in this program. The difference between the charitable foundation and a, and a registered charity is that a foundation exists to give out money, whereas a registered charity is an organization that is able to receive charitable donations and uh, uh, provide a tax receipt for that. So just keep that um, distinction in mind. Um, and also ineligible are organizations that directly or indirectly receive ongoing funding from the Department of Sport, Culture, and Heritage. So if you think your organization is not eligible, there may be other grants available for you, uh, for your organization. Um, in addition to some existing grant programs that your organization may be uh, eligible for, in November, this coming in November, we are launching a new grant specifically for community not-for-profits called Support Community Impact. So you can find right now information about it on our website at artscouncil.mb.ca. And of course, there will be more information coming about that uh, grant in November. So now we're gonna talk about uh, some of the parameters of the new Support Operate grant. Um, the deadline is January 25th, 2024. Now, this is a two-year grant covering the 2024-25 and 25-26 fiscal years. So it's a two-year grant. The minimum request is $20,000 per year. So that means the minimum grant amount will be $20,000. There is a maximum grant amount and it's based on your annual revenues, but please refer to the table in the application for more details about that. So how do you start an application? Let's let's review that. So um, obviously you access the application from the Manipogo profile. And the first stage, the first thing you're gonna do is read through the guidelines. This is a document that has a lot of useful and detailed information that is important for you to know before starting your uh, application. Once you've read through those uh, guidelines, you will answer the yes, no questions in the prerequisite check. So after you submit those, it can take about five business days for a MAC staff member to review your prerequisite check and approve it. Um, and if it is approved, you will then have access to the application and you can be working uh, on your submission. Um, I just want to point out that the photos that you've been seeing have been submitted by some of our current support uh, operate applicants. So the next stage is um, if your organization's prerequisite check is approved and your organization is not already reporting financial information in that CADAC database, 
you will now be sent an email with instructions on how to access CADAC. Now, the CADAC website, www.cadac.ca, has a lot of really helpful tutorials to get you started. So please take advantage of that. And uh, also, of course, Mac staff are also available to answer any questions you have about CADAC financials. So now let's just briefly touch on the four different sections of the application. These sections correspond to the assessment criteria used by peer assessors who will review your application. Um, the first section is impact. So this is where you're going to talk about your organization's programming plans for the next two years. The first question that you'll answer in this section um, will be um, to you will be asked to identify uh, um, your organization's category. So MAC recognizes four distinct categories or types of organizations in its support operate program. They are community building, education and training, presenting and publishing, and sector building. So each organization category has a tailored application form with assessment questions reflecting the category's characteristics. Regardless of what kind of uh, category you choose, you will have the opportunity to address all of the work that your organization does. And we wanna stress that MAC does not prioritize any category above any other. I'm not going to go over detailed descriptions of what those category types are, but you can find those descriptions in the guidelines that I mentioned earlier uh, for the support operate grant. And, you know, if you're not sure what type of a category your organization is, you know, contact a program consultant, talk it through, and we'll figure out what's going to be a good fit for you. The next section is called inclusion. So the Manitoba Arts Council believes in the importance of arts and culture for the benefit of all Manitobans. We strive for funding programs and policies that are equitable for all. And organizations that receive a, a support, operate funding, are expected to lead by example in these areas, uh, in the areas specifically of truth and reconciliation, accessibility, and equity. So in the application, in this section, you will be asked to describe how your organization is making progress in at least some of these areas. The third section of the application is operations. So this is where you tell us about your organization and how it is run. Remember, this is an operating grant, not a project grant. So in operating funding, um, you are expected to, uh, the assessment will include uh, an assessment of the organization and its ability to deliver its programming. Now, for some of you who might have applied in this program before and aren't in CADAC, this is where you will notice the change. There will not be any financial information in the application. You enter all your financial and statistical information in the CADAC database. Um, the final section of the application is very important. It's support material. Support material is visual and or um, audio examples of artistic work. So this is your opportunity to provide high quality samples of the work you've described that your organization does in the application. So here are a few examples of what you can include, images of productions or exhibitions, musical or video recordings, written material, uh, photos of workshops, classes, or gatherings that your organization has had, or even photos of your facility being used by other groups. Um, so there is one last section of the application, and this is the guidelines I've talked about before. Um, so you can find the guidelines here in that last tab. You can also find them right now on the website. If you search for the Support Operate Grant, you will find that document there. Um, so again, this has detailed information about the grant and also uh, the assessment rubric. So these are the questions that the peer assessors respond to when reviewing your application. So who are those peer assessors? Well, um, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we do want to say that the Sport Operate Program is competitive. Applying does not guarantee funding. So for the assessment of this grant, applications are grouped by categories. Remember we talked about the categories of organizations. So they're grouped by category for peer assessment. The peer assessment panels will be comprised of Manitoban 
and national arts professionals with expertise and experience running comparable arts and cultural organizations. Notification will happen in May 2024. So it takes a few months for that assessment to happen. So basically that's our presentation for today. We wanted to leave lots of time uh, for a Q&A, which is what we're gonna move into now, Q&A se uh, session. If for some reason there's a lot of questions and we don't get to your questions, please contact Help Desk uh, during business hours and your call or email will be forwarded to uh, the appropriate program consultant to answer your question. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. And I think we're gonna open it up to uh, Q&A right now. <laughs>